Hello! I am John, and today I am going to be playing some Total War Warhammer 2 Curse of the Vampire Ghost. I fight for the greater good. I've already played some of it. I'm playing on my own as the ninja badass RNS Assault Spite. Finding out that crabs are fun. Sartosans are fun. Bet gunners. Just, just all of them are fun. I'm also planning to play her on my own. Since frankly, not a lot of people really liked Celestia. I don't know if a lot of people really liked Anessa. Everyone wanted him. By what I've been hearing. I can explain the stuff as we load in a minute, but for this campaign, we'll be as long as I remember every other day since we're gonna alternating between Luther Harkin, the Mad Arch Commodore, and Mr. Count Noctilus of the Dreadfleet. He will be He will be on the Vortex. Noctilus will be Grand Campaign. Well, it will be fun. Because I'm trying to get myself to, well, stick with shit and actually record and stuff because I've been forgetting for a long time, if you haven't noticed. And I know this is probably not one of the big things, but eh. Quiet, Katie. They say Wolfheart's ship, the Vengeance, is sunk. Sixty cannons and two hundred souls lost to the deep. They say it was a fell storm that took her, or some say it was pirates from the Maelstrom. They say she was lost here in the realm of Luther Harkon. And to trespass in these waters is to invite death on board. But then they know nothing. You waste our time. Wait. This is the map you are looking for, crafted by Captain Jacob Wolfhart himself. I beg your patience, for its secrets are easily missed. Mathlanka, Simba. Witness Wolfhart's obsession, a life spent chasing tavern stories and myth. Sightings, eyewitness accounts, a hundred shipwrecks named and dated. Like you, Wolfhard knew it was no storm or jagged rocks that caused their demise. It was the Tide Maker, the ancient Merworm. The elves named it Aminar. Wolfhart's ship, where is it? Ah, yes, its final resting place. It was here he fought the beast, the fight to the death. All but one of his crew were lost. It was he who marked the map with this cross. The vengeance lies here. 
And if the story runs true, a weapon lies with her. A weapon to kill the unkillable. To challenge the beast is to challenge the sea itself, cursing all that sail with its retribution. Wolfhart sought infamy for killing the beast, but the question remains, why would your kind seek it? the map. What are your orders? Kill the beast. Resurrect the beast. Rule the waves. So, that was that. Uh, anyway, we'll go here. I'm gonna cut up again. I won't meet myself. Cast adrift and blown to these humid shores. I thirst for control of my mind as it struggles and bickers with my desires. And now, the wretched mutineers to the north think my affliction holds us back. But we shall show them who truly rules the vampire coast. Out in the great ocean, the maelstrom rages at the center of the galleon's graveyard. A great source of power. Controlled by the formidable conjurer known as Count Noctilus. Yes, we must keep our eyes on him and his mysterious ethereal stronghold. Across the straits are the desert lands of the Lich King. He has always been an ally to vampires. But his fate depends on whether he wants to make an enemy of me. There is only room for one king in these parts. The sea offers wealth and power. But Lustria is home to the abandoned cities of the Lizardmen and their many mysterious treasures. Using their artifacts, we will surely be able to uncover some way to repair my damaged psyche. We must! The scheming lizard men of Chanwapek have been trespassing. If not for the promise of their magical relics, we would have wiped them out already. For now, we watch them. The Vampire Coast is, and always will be, ours. For we are the terror of the seas. We are the Pirate King. So, now that we're getting in, we got ourselves our objectives, all that stuff. As you can tell, Luther Harkin is a little bit insane. That's uh, because of backstory that I may or may not go into. Okay, that's better with. Anyway, so our objective is to kill the giant merworm, as they call it. I just call it a giant sea dragon thingy rebuffer. Basically, we have to get that giant har the harpoon that was on the ship. We have to get, we have to collect the three verses of these sea shanties. And then we do one last battle. Our legendary lord and some special lords that we can research have the capability of building 
ships, which kind of makes them a lot more powerful than your average army. Reason being why I'm not really going to have many normal armies. We also have infamy because, well, we're pirates. If we get high enough, we can convince the three people who know the sea shanties to come after us because, well, we took their spot, they're kind of pissed off at us. And we can make pirate coves and coastal settlements, or port settlements, I should say, to basically screw up the enemy quite a lot. Plus, we can leech stuff. We can leech resources off of them if we want to. We have to do that. Also, there's maps. Maps are another cool thing. And yeah, I have it in a weird setting mode thing. Um, oh wait, never mind. I think that is supposed to be there. Just about to say, um, why is there a, um, Skull Cove in the middle of land? But yeah, so he's already on the venue, so I can fight him for the Star Metal Harpoon. That's not a problem. We have ourselves Luther Harkin, who has that powerful ability, and as I've said, my resolution is a little bit fucked up, so bear with me. Please. Then we have zombie deck hands, zombie gun room mobs. The first suicide unit that you can recruit. Badass one ghouls, which are apparently from the mountains. It's one of the weird things that I've learned about this DLC by reading the information on the units is for some reason we have a mountain unit. I'm not going to be using, by the way, I'm not going to be using a uh, bloated corpse as much just for the sheer fact that, well, I don't really feel like spending 300 on a unit that's only purpose is to go in and die is really that worthwhile. Especially if we start to get into kind of a heap of money. Or lack of money, which happened, in, which is happening a little bit in my solo campaign that I'm doing on my own. And yes, so there's two parts that we can do for Luther Harkin, and eventually he'll start to get these other traits on him. Right now, I believe he's mad. Right, he's mad. Yes, he has different traits that will, as it says. Harkin's current personality will randomly change until his mind is restored. Not me. They aren't all. <laughs> have to get you and you shouldn't Apparently, <laughs> although a sign of madness doesn't mean they aren't all have to get you and you shouldn't get full friends. <laughs> so, it doesn't matter if you're paranoid if you're right. <laughs> uh, beautiful logic, my good sir. Beautiful logic. Anyway, and yeah, we, we do have some mods. I, there, there are mods that, in my opinion, are kind of required. So, I don't know what it's supposed for, besides probably giving more explosive damage and whatnot. So, we got ourselves a lot of stuff that we can do, but for now, I think we're just going to go into combat. First, though, we're going to shut this off. Basically, somewhere over here, probably near the Pox Marsh. But then, in order to get our regiments of renown, we have to do these different things. Which is fight these different pirates that are all around, holding a special treasure from somewhere. Of some a special treasure of some kind, like this is holding a rock from Swordshofen, this is holding a nugget of gold from a mountain that is dangerous enough that it spawned out an entire group of worn ghouls. Like, all of them are connected, like, all of these pieces are connected to the order of whatever the, well, regiment of renown is. So, yeah, we're just gonna go and get into this fight. Show off some of these cool units. Katie, your ear is okay. And why do they have Zufbar 42 pounders? This is turn one! 
Why do they have a Why do that? Okay, I'm gonna be legit here. Fuck my life. <laughs> it's not it's not a powerful ability. It's just really annoying. Let's see a man of war. Oh, yep, we can throw that. That can be just Ooh, we can also go on the run creating gunnery mobs if we want. Hell yeah. Those are my favorite units by far, because the rotting Prometheans are just these like giant hermit crabs. That will just scuttle around and massacre the living crap out of enemies very slowly, but they do. Katie, if, if it hurts, then don't do it. Oh wait, you want something. Well, you ain't gonna get it. So, anyway. And these ones literally just have guns on the back of them. Like, two guys with cannons on the back. Like, there really is nothing greater in my opinion. We're gonna grab that. We're gonna... Oh, do we need corruption? Nah, it's good to always have a little bit of corruption. But seeing as though this is my main settlement, I don't really need much else. I'm gonna grab some money, though. So that's one of the big things, is since I can... Okay, I'm gonna have to click Arkin. Since I can do this, I don't really feel the need to actually, well, simply put, go out and do a lot of the stuff that normal people would do. Like, you know, actually build a legitimate recruitment settlement. Especially since, you know, I'm only planning on having lords that don't need that. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a fight, but we have Luther Harkin, we have more guns than them, we have some birdies, and we have some more ghouls. I might post another video today, depending on what happens, aka if I have to cut this one a little bit short because we've got a line up. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry. I'll be back. I can do something so that my dog stops whining at me. things and she does not make no for an answer. It's not for very long. So we got ourselves some zombie deck hands. By what I've been told, they're kind of in between skeletons and Empire Sword or Skeleton Warriors and Empire Swordsmen. The good skeleton warriors. Some of them have peg legs, some of them have eye patches, most of them have bandanas on their head. A couple of them don't have much on their head. <laughs> Ooh, files of blood or something. We got ourselves our zombie gunnery mob with handguns. We've got some rifle guys. We got ourselves some sidelines. Both of these guys will be in the back. I don't know how to choose sideline guys. I call them sidelines because I will put them there because we go back and forth. They can fire well on the move. Which in my opinion is one of the most useful mechanics in the game. And one of the things that in my opinion may be uh what else? As broken as they were. 
Also, we'll just throw these guys on over here. Have them all nice and hidden and ready to go in case we need them. We'll have these guys up here like this, ready to go and need them. And we'll start because the enemy also has a bloated corpse. We can also look at that bloated corpse. Which is literally just a giant fat sack of shit with bombs. So with the capability of being a living bomb. And 804 health and this size of unit. Okay, good. The enemy was a dumbass. It didn't do it along my lines. <laughs> I just realized that face. <laughs> that, is, that is disgustingly adorable. It's mostly just disgusting, but still. Okay, they have two units of handgun, though. So. Okay, so we are going to send my bats against their bats. This is going to be a bit of a difficult battle. We're gonna send him against him, 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 we're gonna send him Slow move. So for my my big my big stupid hope here is that the bats will take a lot of the front and force of missiles and be able and I'll just be able to run them away when required. Since we just pause right now. It it is literally just zombie deck hands with pistols being carried on the backs or being carried by Larger fell bats. Since everyone says, oh yeah, they're just normal fell bats, these things are larger than your average fell bat by a lot. Okay, never mind, we're just gonna straight fucking run. That is a lot of gunfire. We're also now gonna run all these guys and then walk these guys. Because I do not want these guys under too much fire. Oh, yep, they have halberds. Over here. We're gonna charge them in when needed. Oh, we should probably. I mean, we should probably. There. Yeah. If any of you know what a Wendigo is, these things are basically Wendigos. If you don't know what a Wendigo is, I'm just gonna explain what these guys are. These guys are basically the frozen, frosty remains of. Pretty okay. Uh, he was just getting pelted to shit. Okay, he is also getting pelted to shit. Why are you? Get the fuck out of there. Just straight get the fuck out of there. Run it in. It's enjoyable to watch these guys. Especially when they do so much damage. Like, just look at that! These guys basically just instant died. Like, I just won the fight there. With just the capability of two of them. Like... They each probably got a solid, like, 50-60 kills. So yeah, these are... Uh, people who were stuck and starving and died in the mountains. <laughs> they all just turned their head like, huh? Is that fresh meat? They, they starved and froze to death in the mountains. At then, dark winds of magic corrupted their bodies and turned them into forever hungry creatures of death. Yeah, though! 105 and 88 compared to the most on my next highest, which is 12. I mean, yes, as much as they're really useful, as you saw, 
one of them just got pelted to absolute shit. And that was just with, like, two guns on them. Like, I've seen elven archers just shred through them like they're nothing. Granted, they're elven archers. But still. Plus, you know, if they hit cavalry by accident. That's the reason why I'm not... That's the reason why I am actually glad, though, that they are, to some degrees at times, included in garrisons. Like, if you get a tier 1 port, you get one of them. If you get a tier 3 port, you get another one of them. Tier 5 port, they both get replaced by a Necrofex Colossus, which we will show off later. Because those things are beasts within themselves. And if we want to sack it, we'll sack it. Yo ho, and a temporary bow. And we don't have enough movement to get back there. Fist. So hey, we have enough money to do that. And we have enough money to do this. Yeah, though, this is one of the things I was talking about with it just kind of being mildly broken, in my opinion. Oh, also, let me check this. Black coffin. Ooh, that's nice. It's actually pretty good. Though, so, yeah, this at top tier gives 12 growth and 80 experience per turn for all units in your army. This gives 8% casualty replenishment. Capability of recruiting Necrotex Colossus, which, as I've said, is a beast within itself. And plus six recruitment capacity for your army, for its fire stuff. This gives 15% upkeep reduction for every single unit in your army. And plus eight vampiric corruption. That's the most stupid one in my opinion. And then we got Moonraker, which... He has plus 30% campaign movement range and 10 wins back. Also, the can- as you saw though, the cannons- as much as those abilities aren't really that useful half the time, they are still nice. If just for the sheer fact that you can just deal in that extra little bit of damage. That's one of the reasons as well why the Lore of Depths, or Lore of the Deep, is such a stupid lore in my opinion. Because, yeah, sure, for maybe like three, like two, three seconds, you get a deal of small chunk of damage to every single unit on the enemy army. But that's a small chunk of damage on every single unit in the enemy army. And if you can keep casting those spells, like if you have a mod that allows you to just keep casting spells, you can just keep that damage going until the enemy, until every single unit in the enemy army is like half health. Beyond the fact as well that you can summon a unit of Rotting Prometheans. I mean, unfortunately you can't summon a unit of Rotting Prometheans Gunnery Mobs or a Rotting Leviathan, but still, a unit of Rotting Prometheans. That can get insane if you want it to. And it can easily get insane. Yeah, I'm thinking we hit there, we, we hit here, then we hit there. Finish these guys off, then we move down and start doing shit. Other shit. Since I'm not playing to be to war with too many people early on. Nor am I really planning to be much early on besides consolidate my place, build up my army, and level up the park, really. <laughs> because, simply put, leveling him up is going to be my big thing. Because once we get that, then we can grab that building that I mildly showed off. That I will show off more later. And yeah, that, as you can see, that's another one of my mods. You don't usually get three, you only get one. And I always feel one is kind of dumb. Speaking of dumb, though! And how about this? And this. Like. 
you can turn your lord into a superpower or a super beast. Like your vampire lord, your your pirate lord is just so much more insane because without even an item they have 5% ward save when no other when all the other factions get maybe a little bit more melee attack maybe a little bit more damage you know not nothing too big 5% melee or 5% ward save for those of you who don't understand how insane that is it is incredibly insane and i'm just going to automate that because that's not a battle worth fighting See, we only gained like 98 bucks out of that. The bloody banner of slayers. Okay. Yeah, we'll throw that on them to give them some bonus against large along with bonus against the infantry. Leave nothing behind. And now we'll just occupy this place. No pirate greater. Now I had to riddle of all. And I also have a mod that makes these more useful. Though... Didn't expect myself to get Campaigner already. Like... I don't know if that's... <laughs> I don't know if that distance should be counted as very far. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think that distance should be counted as very far. I will readily admit, that might be a bit cheating. Just a bit. Just a bit. Free burger. Easy. Oh, yeah, I dropped the building. Uh here it is. So basically this is the one that you pay, this is the one that it takes time. So once you get this, it that's a it gives you decent debuffs. Or decently massive debuffs. I mean for Luther Harkin's army, the magic resistance and the winds of magic. Actually, none of those are really that terribly bad. So, really, if you just only have Luther Harkin's army and no other army is with you, then Collapsed Cavern isn't that bad. But once we get up to the Ancient Vault, oh boy, Wraith Storm for all of your armies, which, to my knowledge, is just like a direct damage bombard spell. You get extra you get two percent extra income for every single building in your entire faction you get ten percent extra when winds of magic or magic resistance you get ten extra power reserve for your winds of magic and you get twenty percent item drop chance faction wide that's probably one of the stupidest things about that though is it's just faction wide insanity Oh, then Luther, what can you get me? You can get me that, or you can recruit that. Why not something along the lines of both? Sure, sure you were. Sure you were just about to. So, yeah, that one's gonna be there. That one's gonna be more inland. The Raging Twins warn Spit, embrace their rage, ignore their anger, and step between Fury and my door. So, I know what they're talking about. They're talking about these two volcanoes. We've gotten one similar to this where I believe I believe I had to dig over here or something. They talked about finding the ash and do 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 and it zoomed me in to this peak. Unless it wanted me to zoom in there, but so probably what it's telling me is go in between the two. There's a lava flow right here. Maybe go into the lava flow and search. If not, someone's going to be over here. So that's a good thing, is you can have your heroes do that. My and the more, you know, the more I play, the more I'll be able to actually show off and everything. So yeah, kind of talking a bit about Luther Harkin in the Azure turn is he was, he's a pirate, obviously. Pirate, pirate vampire from the beginning, you know, he wasn't a pirate and then got turned into a vampire. I don't know, actually I'm not sure about that, but what I know is that he was not content with just, you know, staying put. He wanted to go out and 
rage, so he, and I know everyone who actually knows the story is probably cringing heavily, but I'm just trying to tell as a bridge to tale as possible to get to the part that actually explains why he went mad. So he has control of the Vampire Coast, which is his coast, which is his place where the undead can go into land and kill everything, loot and everything like that. But on one of these adventures, because the old ones had had enough, they basically cursed him and broke his mind, severed his connection to the Winds of Magic, all of that stuff. And now he's insane and everything like that. So, I mean, yeah, really not much of an explanation there, but... I mean, do you really need much of an explanation for why this guy is crazy? You say something. Oh, you do? Well, unfortunately, I don't have it. <laughs> sure, we'll just put a couple of bloody corpses in, why not? I... I will admit, they are fun to use. <laughs> like, as again, as much as I'm not going to be wasting my money on them, like, you know, if this gets below a thousand, I'm not going to be wasting my money on bloated corpses. But seeing as though it's still reasonably high income, probably because of the fact that I easily control two corpses, two, two, two ports, not two corpses, two ports. Excuse me. Hmm. Yeah. That's... Yeah, though. Rotting Promethean Gunnery mobs are just insane. Because A, you have the armor piercing value of the bullets. I don't think they're really, you know, technically speaking, they're not armor piercing, but they still will punch through armor decently well. And since there's three rounds that are shot from each shot, because it's a hand cannon that those things have. That's a lot of damage. That's just gonna come down on one thing at one point in time. And just kinda slaughter it. Beyond the fact as well that the crabs are basically anti-cavalry without being anti-large. Because they're big enough that they're just like, Hey, horse, you wanna charge into this vulnerable line of infantry? Smash. Hits that shell and does not keep going. Like, they are basically a mobile roadblock, and it is fantastic. And that's really their. And that's really the Ryan Promethean's only purpose is to be a living roadblock. But if you throw in the gun, the hand cannons on top of them, that actually gives them some nice damage. So then they're both a roadblock, but then they've also got some nice spikes that can with range. Captain's cabin, upgrade that, okay, okay. But we're gonna first be upgrading that place though, because that's a bit more important. Let's see, can we move that one? Yes, we can. And then we can catch this army while it's still tired, we can hit Plax, and we can sack it to the ground. Never mind, it's only making 30. It's probably not going to be worthwhile. Yeah, it's only going to be 349. We'll raise it to the ground then. Okay, then. Why do they have bombers? Don't worry, I have like, I have like a couple hundred pistol guys. It's fine. This is going to be a difficult fight because of the bombers. Since one of the big things about the bombers is they're basically like those leech bullas with a lot less ammo. Like this ter pterodon skink bola riders, or pterodon bola, I don't know. Fire leech bullas. The, 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 the bomb throwers, basically. <laughs> so basically, they throw explosives at ammunition instead of having an ability to drop it. Like, uh, gyro bombers and gyrocopters have, which gives them versatility and annoyance capabilities against my super massive super horde of freaking zombie shits, pretty much. 
there really there really is no kind word I can say. They are bad soldiers, but they are my chief mass. Oh yeah, and my couple fatzos. That is another thing as well that I have heard some people who I've been watching play this game say is the bloated corpses when they charge in if you didn't notice they just hold their arms out like give me a hug and it's just kind of hilarious because of the simple fact that they're it's like they all they want to do is be loved but every time they touch something they blow up <laughs> they're like that guy for, they're like that robot from Futurama that just Every time he gets anxious or excited or anything like that, he just kind of dies. Here, so we can have three on the side. We have three on the side. And throw this one in the heel. And all these guys are going to go like that. We have the peppers in the back. Wow, in the back. Even though he doesn't have that much rain, we'll have him in the back and we're gonna have these guys over here. Hoobadoo! Come on, we're gonna move him back a bit. Fortunately, they have no blow up, guys. Fortunately, you know, the vast majority of their army is heavily weakened. So I know exactly where my deck drunkers are going to be going. They're going to be going after these guys. These guys are going to hurt. Beware the deck droppers black powder bomb released indiscriminately. If somewhat accurately, or inaccurately, from above. If I fear them, they're not going to be Bam, 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 Just shoot the shit out of them. Shoot the shit out of them. As they are going into... Oh, okay. I'm okay with you being a stupid shit like that. Move the fatsos in! Lucky when he's dead. Motion. Love me! Oh, sorry, tree. Love me! They just do a belly flop. Love me! <laughs> belly flop of death. Let's start moving in some of these here soldiers. We're going to put it back to normal speed. I know we're lagging some of that just for recording. I'm sure, because I'm sure what we're going on if I had that machine is expected. So yeah. One of the best parts about these guys is they have hunger. Or the hunger. Basically, as they're in Malay, they're healing themselves. Which basically means if you can't burst them down, they're in combat forever. And ever. And ever. And ever and ever and ever. And ever. Stuff like that. Oh, shit. Oh, we're gonna do 
lima 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 any of things here that are not raining probably ones that are in combat and being in mind well there's that one but it's basically doomed so Though, they still haven't even lost a single unit, and they're healing back a lot of the damage that they're taking. It almost looks like you did a sweet sort of like dodge move. Why are you not hitting him, Luther? Well, too bad for you! He's just raging! <laughs> okay, I think, I mean, I know the whole fact that he died was because he crumpled to death, but I just love, though, how it, how it's just like, Luther just basically said, fuck this, and just, like, just ram, started rampaging, and then, just like, oh god, fuck that, and <laughs> died. I don't know. I, I found enjoyment in that one, I shouldn't have played it for that. But, hey, it's funny in my opinion, so, yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, again, like, as you can just see, bloated corpses are useful. Mourn ghouls are also very useful. Because they kind of just shred and go. I did not actually realize the random name generator in this game would actually do that. I thought it would just have it be like Henry Sharp Eyes instead of Henry Sharp Eyes or Sharp Eye. It's cool, actually. Yeah, it's not worth it. Do you want to up, Katie? That's not that Executioner. I'll do that for healing. We will start grabbing Ghost Creature. Or replenish with some. And we'll replace the bloated corpses with some, decent, with some semi decent soldiers, I should say. Gentleman Jenkins. He's mostly character skills. Probably mostly um, one specific character skill known as the skill dump, but regardless. Yeah, the reason why I didn't take that, and the reason why I'm not going to take it ever, or any of these Wizardman settlements, is because of my the playstyle that I've just kind of developed. Is I don't like to take a lot of places with these people. It just doesn't feel right. So yes, I will take the entirety of the Vampire Coast. Uh, then I will focus on taking places like the Galleon's Graveyard. Little clusters of islands here and there. Any, any little, like, islands are going to be one of my big targets. Like, Sartosa over here is definitely going to be a big one, because Sartosa is useful, simply put. That'll probably actually be it. Like, mainly the places that I'm going to hit, I'm going to either 
like sack or put Okay, the sun is just being weird. Ugh. Sorry, so, something's just highlighted in red light, and I just realized that was the setting sun. It was a little creepy to just look up and all of a sudden have a shelf glowing, simply put. Ugh. on the lights. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. So with Luther Harkin and his sort of abilities Hopefully we get to one by the time we get my helicopter. That's calling it good soon. Oh, yes, we did! That is one of the things that I'm going to say is insane. Because then he can cast spells from the Lore of the Deep, which means that he also gets that aura or that blend casting effect that I was talking about that gives the damage. And he's already a badass in combat anyway, since he eventually gets freaking terror geist. An explosive ammo for his pistol. And he can shoot while on the terror geist. And he can shoot while the terror geist is just ripping into shit. What's that? Okay, the coward takes control. Still by the most incredible, which would sooner have an hour behind his undead minion or face in danger directly. That sounds about right. Unfortunate, but eh. Let's see here. Oh, right, we need the ship's carpenter. It's a very important thing. Because then my shit doesn't cost as much for my ship. Back to your ranks. The land is easy. Also, that's a. Another reason why I don't really want to take any normal armies is because of dealing with loyalty, but hey, the ability known as shared loot is available if I want to lower my infinity. And one of the people I was watching, it just kind of made me sad about them a little bit. They didn't realize the whole fact that share the loot doesn't give loyalty for all of your armies, it just gives loyalty for the one that you shared the loot to. Since he kept doing it with Luther Harkins, thinking, oh yeah, it's gonna give to the random army that I have over there that's hardly in combat, and could probably use some more combat and everything. No, no, it's not. So yeah, that's one of the cool things about Luther Harkin, though, is just the whole fact that he has these different personalities that are positives and negatives. This gives him more speed and missile damage, but it gives him less leadership, which is kind of unfortunate, but whatever. And this ability is also stupid. Oh, that gives mis miscast chance. Okay. And 10% physical resistance reduction, which is also really solid. Anyway, so, yeah, the three that I've seen so far are the Mad, the Coward, and the Bad, right, the Bad. So, the Mad, as you've seen, gives some increased capabilities in the way, but allows him to go rampage. The coward, as you've seen, gives him increased speed and missile damage while reducing his leadership. The bad increases his melee capabilities a little bit, decreases his missile damage, a little bit increases his physical damage, his normal his, like, melee damage, his weapon strength, but it decreases his uh, other damage, and it gives him an actual spell to use called the Kraken's Pull, 
which is one of the new vortexes that is pretty pretty solid. Pretty solid as far as vortexes go. Anyway though. We've only made it five turns in an hour. I feel kinda of bad about that, but it's fine. It's kind of a bit of me talking along with some you know, nice battles. Unfortunately, I don't know how to cut either, and that's one of the you know, that's another thing. We haven't gone about an hour, right? Yeah, 55 minutes. Anyway, so. With that, I think I'm going to call it good. Good first episode. We got a little bit. I might make another today. I'm not sure. Tomorrow we will begin our big boy campaign of Count Noctilus. Or Noctilus, whatever you, Whatever the like small intricacies of pronouncing his name is. I really don't care. And hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Turn on some more and tell me some other games. And goodbye.